So I'm going to go really quickly through some of our archetypes. The next thing we do is we go for every area. We say, well, we need four or five monsters for this area. Um, and we have probably about 100 monsters planned for the game as a whole. Don't quote me on that, but it's a rough number. Um, and it's really important. So a lot of these monsters repeat function even if they have different, uh, different ideas or different abilities. And so we archetype those functions. So the first one we call is a swarmer. Um, Fighting tons and tons of dudes that die really easy is super fun, and that's what these guys' jobs are. Most of them are melee characters, most of them are really weak, um, but they are, they, they are also really good to provide kind of health walls so that more interesting or more complex monsters can interact with them. Uh, range creatures, which are kind of our stock, most threatening thing we can put out there. I mean, certainly we can put a boss or something bigger, but range creatures, because they don't have to move towards you, they can all attack you at once, tend to be pretty dangerous. Uh, lieutenants, which do things like resurrect enemies, and up them, and spawn. Um, these are typically not placed in high numbers, but they're put in to be kind of this high priority target that you want to go after. Elites. Elites are basically meant to make you kind of pause for a second and encounter something that takes more than a couple hits to kill, or maybe has a really high damage attack. They are kind of, a, a again, a um, focus, like a target that has a very high priority to it, but unlike the lieutenant, they're often um, a little bit scarier. You have to, you know, you can't just run straight into them every time. So an AoE character or what we sometimes call area of denial characters, because a lot of their job is to change the play space. I'm going to set the ground on fire underneath you and now you don't want to stand there anymore. So when the player has to kind of react like that, it's interesting gameplay. So weakeners, weakeners are kind of like lieutenants in that they're, um, they're high priority, but they also have the side effect of making swarmers even, and range guys even more threatening. So, and then we have a bunch of one-to-one -one offs that are just kind of cool ideas we have. Um, I'm not going to explain what all these are, I just thought you'd have fun debating the names on the forums because we come up with a lot of crazy names. So, a uh, spreadsheet, yeah, because we really wanted this presentation to be exciting. So, um, spreadsheets are not just the tools of bean counters. Um, if there's any kids in the audience, learn your math if you want to work in video games, it's important. So, um, we use spreadsheets, this spreadsheet in particular, we call the Monster Progression Spreadsheet, and every one of these colored bars is a different area. And it just kind of shows how we plan our monsters from area to area, and when we do that, we look at shape, color and archetypes and we make sure that we have a good mix in each one and that each one complements and then as we move from area to area we're also introducing new challenges and new monster types at a really good rate and this is our tool to do that. I'm going to walk you through the monster pipeline that we use. It's basically the process by which a uh, monster gets into the game. The first step is to start with a concept, and the concept can come, really come from anywhere. It can come from uh, somebody on the team who went on vacation in Hawaii and saw something interesting and had a monster idea visually. It could come from you know someone played through the latest level environment and said you know this, this desert environment really is lacking in you know particularly you know a wasp, or it could come from someone who just has a, a mechanical idea. Um, this sketch uh, comes from Paul LeBron and our team who said I really want a monster that will just leap off of walls. I don't, I, don't, I don't care if it's, you know, what kind of monster it is, I just want it to leap off the wall. I think that'd be a fun mechanic to play with. So the initial idea comes from anyone on the team and from anywhere. Once we have that initial idea, we need to flesh it out. So we'll start with that initial concept and flesh out all the other details about what that monster might evolve. All this does is done on paper. It's very multidisciplinary to try and just flesh out and make sure everyone has a picture of where we're going. After we have that, we're going to uh, do a very rough uh, art uh, pass on it. Uh, we don't want to spend too much time on the animations because maybe the abilities might change. We don't want to spend too much time on the look because we, have, we, don't, we, don't, we haven't seen it in the game yet. So this is just enough to get a prototype into the game as quickly as possible. The next step is to actually hook it up and give it some of its basic abilities. Again, this is a rough pass. The, the goal is to prototype the monster. We have, uh, Jay mentioned the, the, the archetypes. You know, you've got your spawn, you know, your spawners, and your swarmers, and your range. And we're just trying to just get the, the, the rough brush strokes in to try and figure out whether or not this monster is going to be fun.